So if you've been to the channel before, welcome back. If this is the first time you've been to the channel, then welcome, nice to see you. Today, we're going to cover a fairly popular topic in plastic surgery. What we're going to discuss is celebrity plastic surgery fails. To be more specific, they're not all complete fails, but some of them definitely are. We're going to discuss celebrities both from the UK and the USA, many very famous faces. And what I'm going to try and do is to demonstrate the difference between look at me plastic surgery, the kind of result which stands out in a crowd, which does not fit in, which does not look natural, from the plastic surgery results which we barely notice. The type of results which could easily walk past us in the street and we wouldn't necessarily know there'd been any plastic surgery at all. Now from a plastic surgeon's point of view it's the second type that we're very much aiming to achieve but sadly what we often hear in plastic surgery practice is oh my goodness have you seen x or y have you seen what they've done I don't want to look like that. So hopefully with a few examples we'll give you an idea of what we're not trying to achieve at least in most cosmetic surgery practice and what can actually be achieved if we pay attention to subtle detail and a result which doesn't stand out in a crowd. If you enjoy what you see then please like and subscribe to our channel Adam Goodwin Surgery. Also leave a comment down below and try and see some of our other videos on the channel describing problems with Botox filler and videos about facelift surgery. As you can imagine, sub-celebrities, it's their job to be noticed, to stand out in a crowd. There's no such thing as bad publicity, only publicity. So maybe it's not for me to mention whether these plastic surgery results are good or not, but I can't help discussing at least some of them to give you an idea what I think is acceptable and what is probably beyond what I would expect from my results or would offer to my patients. It's important to note that a lot of celebrity trends become trends for the man and woman in the street due to increased exposure on TikTok or on Instagram or amongst celebrity culture. I get a number of phone calls within a week or two asking they can attain the same look. It's important for us as plastic surgeons to at least have a responsible understanding of where this ideology is coming from, to be able to explain to patients clearly how what they see on Instagram is not as easily achievable as Instagram would make you believe. So the first celebrity plastic surgery result I want to talk about today is Liam Payne. Liam Payne is a pop star from One Direction, a band born in the UK from a reality TV show. He is maybe 28 or 29 years old, um, a multimillionaire celebrity who has recently become very famous, not just for his music, but also for his look. For me, the absolute key changes that I see compared to previous photos of him when he was younger are number one, the changes in the mid face. He does seem to have early tear trough deformity with some mid facial descent, which is a fairly common thing in your late 20s, early 30s. I don't believe he has had any surgery or treatment of a non-surgical nature to this area and he certainly seems to be a little more athletic and lost some weight so the under eye area for me is not the result of cosmetic surgery. He does seem to have slightly thicker shinier tighter skin and this could well be the product of some skin conditioning treatments like microneedling or skin booster filler. We see this a lot even laser resurfacing or dermabrasion can do this. These are popular celebrity treatments. Certainly when he smiles and animates there are very few wrinkles and the entire face looks a little bit stiff and wooden to me which is a classic sign of dermal stiffening treatments. Compared to previous photos when he was younger he seems to have a much fuller top lip and this would almost certainly be the result of probably lip filler but the other consideration which we don't see very often these days is a lip implant made of silicon. I can't be sure which one of these is likely but given the popularity of lip filler it is probably this one. In my opinion he's probably had 3 cc, 3 cubic centimeters of lip filler to gain the volume that he has in this photo. The next change which I think we can all see is the athletic slim nature of his mid cheek. This is almost certainly due to buckle fat removal. This is a procedure that almost entirely due to Liam Payne's appearance has become super popular in my practice. 
for five years I probably had two or three requests a year and over the last year I must have had 50 to 80 requests for this specific procedure and I'm fairly sure that Liam Payne's look is the one that has led a number of people to come and see me about this procedure. It certainly is a stark reminder of how celebrity culture and trends amongst celebrities are a very powerful influence on young people. The vast majority of people who come to see me about this procedure are both men and women, but typically between the ages of 18 and 30. Looking further down his jaw, his look is enhanced by an extremely well-defined jawline. And this is obvious to me, both in the chin tip projection, which is very stark, also the chisel jawline itself and the very well-defined angle of the mandible. Now the chin tip for me, it's very obviously a chin implant. No amount of soft tissue augmentation will give such a defined look in my experience. I think this is coupled with either some masseter Botox to slim down the angle of the mandible, but I think even more likely is some implants to enhance the definition of the angle of the mandible. Now, this is not a particularly common procedure, but it's an absolutely classic way to gain this very, very chiseled, defined look that we can clearly see in this picture. For me, Liam Payne looks quite startling in his appearance in this particular image and it's gained him a lot of fame and notoriety for the way he looks in this particular picture. Overall this is a very noteworthy look which certainly generated a lot of attention so it probably did its job but it only scores a 6 out of 10 on the natural plastic surgery scale. This is not how normal people look and it's very much not how Liam Payne looks but I think it's fair to describe it as a transformative procedure rather than a rejuvenating procedure. He is only young after all, and if he was aiming for shock and awe, then it's been job very well done. It's worth noting, however, but in terms of your average person wanting to replicate this look, the buckle fat can't be replaced. The chin implant and um, mandible implants can be removed, but there is only a moderate degree of reversibility about these changes and so it's not necessarily something that somebody in the street might necessarily want to emulate and it's certainly not something I would recommend. Next we're going to talk about Katie Price. Katie Price is an English favourite, a glamour model, who has been famous for 25 years or so, first for the way she looked and then for her personality, extended family and crazy antics quite often associated with her experience with plastic surgery. She has had many changes in her life. In the early stages her breasts were operated on repeatedly in order to gain her work as a swimsuit model. But more recently it seems the surgery is a means in itself because the changes she undergoes garner media attention. Certainly to start with she's very clearly had some Botox, hasn't everybody, but she has virtually no lines or wrinkles on her face whatsoever, which is a bit of a giveaway of too much Botox. Looking at uh, her upper eyelids, actually I don't think they have been surgically addressed recently and she may benefit from either a brow lift or upper eyelid surgery as her Botox is making her brows heavy and her upper eyelids look a little hooded. This for me would be something that she might choose to address. Of course the alternative would be to have less Botox in the forehead but she is now in her 40s and this is likely to become a problem in the future. Her eyebrows look microbladed or tattooed on which is again a common thing and so a more simple approach would be to alter the position of her eyebrows by whatever technique she uses but this is something to bear in mind. The next thing she's clearly had nasolabial line filler and in her specific case on these photos it looks a little stiff and wooden. This means that when patients with this much filler smile there tends to be no real softness to the face or to the smile and so it looks a little artificial. She's definitely had lip filler both top and bottom and this not only causes historic effects of stiffness but it also causes some very full slightly artificial swollen lips. In the white female the standard lip distribution is one third vertical height in the upper lip and two thirds vertical height in the lower lip and Katie doesn't seem to demonstrate that at all. Much more 50-50 which is a classic sign of lip filler. For me multiple episodes of lip filler can be a problem because the stiffness the filler and the injections cause can be permanent. 
So be aware that multiple episodes of lip filler is not a temporary solution to lip volume loss. The next thing is quite obvious and that's she's clearly had a recent lip lift. Now you can tell this because there are photos of her with a new scar in this area, but an absolute classic giveaway is before her surgery, she didn't really have enough vertical lip height to give away, but a lip lift trades vertical skin height for increased teeth and lip show. This is definitely what she has, but unfortunately for me, it makes, it makes the area of her mid face look dysmorphic. There is now not enough vertical lip height to look natural. And unfortunately, once this operation has been performed to this degree, then not only are the scars difficult to hide, but it's very, very difficult to put that tissue back. And so this is a permanent change she's likely to be stuck with. She's obviously had her teeth veneered, whitened or crowned, and again, this is a pretty common procedure, especially here in the UK, where people travel to cheaper surgical locations like Turkey. Teeth that look this square, white and artificial are not a great look natural cosmetic treatment in my opinion. The next thing which is fairly obvious is she's exchanged her breast implants for enormous implants. These are probably 900 cc's and they are far too big for her frame and far too big for the skin envelope in my opinion. Implants as big as this will likely cause a whole range of problems in the future. The skin envelope will now be very stretched. The nipples will be very enlarged. There will be very little breast tissue left. And so once these implants need removing, there will be almost nothing to reconstruct a natural looking breast from. But this is needless to say a problem that she's encountered throughout her life. And it's just another reason for her to need more cosmetic surgery in the future. What's interesting to note from this photo is you can see the scars from a previous breast breast reduction. We call this a wise pattern scar and it sits like a T under the breast. This is where she's previously had implant surgery, had large implants removed and then had the skin and breast tissue envelope tightened. Unfortunately, as we say, she's now gone super large and she's going to have more problems like this in the future. Her buttocks look out of proportion with the rest of her body and this is going to cause problems in the future because buttock implants are very much like breast implants. They stretch the tissues in time when they start to cause problems, then they need to be exchanged and all of the tissues that are left behind are thin and saggy and definitely will need lifting. She's previously admitted to having had a facelift. I'm pleased to say that on the close-up pictures around her ears, then there's no obvious signs like pixie ear deformity or scars. At least this has turned out to be a good surgical result. And so that's uh, that's a positive change. Overall, I'd give this a three out of 10 on the realistic plastic surgery scale. None of it really fits. None of it looks particularly natural. There's way too many scars that are visible and the overall appearance is not one that I would choose for myself or my patients. The next celebrity I want to discuss is Johnny Depp now. Johnny Depp has been famous for many, many years, an outstanding actor but has been in the news more recently for positive and negative reasons. And we all learned about his crazy lifestyle during his trial with Amber Heard. But what it has brought into sharp focus is how good he looks for his age. Johnny must be in his late 50s or maybe even early 60s now, and certainly doesn't look that age at all. For me, the classic signs that he's been changing things include his very full head of hair, it's going very slightly gray at the ends and undoubtedly it is dyed, but his hairline is so complete that it looks like he may have had a top up hair transplant. Difficult to say, some people are just blessed with perfect hair. He definitely has a natural set of wrinkles, both in his forehead, glabella region and crow's feet. Given the fact that he's almost certainly been sensible and used sunblock his entire life, his skin is thick and well preserved, but even with that, I think he's probably had some Botox, but it's been well applied. It looks natural. It looks very subtle. He still has movement and lines, which is how it's meant to be. So if he has had Botox, then well done whoever gave it to him because it looks exactly as it should. He has a moderately heavy brow and a slightly heavy eyelids. Again, this is age appropriate, but given the fact that he's 60, maybe he's had a little bit of surgery to his upper eyelids. Certainly not anything that I can clearly see. So that's a positive if he's had anything at all. I think he's got some very subtle signs of a facelift. He has some wrinkling of the skin just in front of the ear behind where the beard growth would be. And this is probably a facelift, especially given the industry he's in and how good his jawline is. 
His submental area looks good, although a little stringy, which is sometimes a sign of age, but can also be a sign of post facelift platysma hyperactivity. This is not a criticism in any way. This is an excellent result and there's no clear signs of facelift surgery other than how good he looks. He's also got reasonably good facial volume with very little submental volume. And again, this may be surgical or it may be just good genetics. Most male celebrities, when they start wearing a beard in their 40s and 50s, is because they've recently had a facelift and they're trying to grow some stubble through the scar. In more recent photos of Johnny Depp, he doesn't wear a beard at all. So this is him expressing how confident he is in the natural way that he looks. Other than, in summary, probably a facelift but done very well and some minor skin techniques, I think Johnny looks very good. This is exactly how plastic surgery should look. And for me, this is a nine out of 10 on the natural plastic surgery scale. Very well done, Johnny. Very well done, your team. This is an excellent overall appearance. The next celebrity I'd like to discuss is Meg Ryan. Now, Meg Ryan was very famous in the 80s and 90s and early noughties. An excellent actress with a very beautiful face who has more recently come into the media eye for a range of reasons, not unfortunately least because of the way that she now looks. She, in this photo, has clearly had some Botox. For me, she's had a little too much, creating some shininess and stiffness to the forehead and brow tissues. This doesn't look natural. This is not how young people look, just a clear sign of cosmetic surgery intervention. As a result of her Botox, she has slightly low eyebrows which makes her upper eyelids look closed and a little heavy, a classic sign of too much Botox. I think her top lip is a little overfull and a little stiff. This is a sign of either fat transfer, but probably more likely multiple filler applications, commonly resulting in stiffness and woodiness and a lack of smoothness of animation when people smile. I think that's what we're seeing in this photo here. She, along with that, has columella strut put in place, which means the tip has no support and is a little droopy. She may have had some upper mid third collapse historically requiring reconstruction which may also be the reason for this particular deformity her cheeks and face are very stiff this is likely to be a combination of two three or maybe even four facelifts which amazingly is not that unusual in celebrity culture plus multiple injectables like filler threads or fat these patients can look just about okay but when you see them live in the flesh talking then it just doesn't look natural and for me this is a classic sign of that phenomenon too much work done too close together which moves the patient's appearance away from normal and into very clearly plastic surgical she has a degree of mid facial descent with a tear trough deformity forming um, as the cheeks fall her cheek volume is now too low on her face creating some nasolabial lines and again a disjunction between what has been attempted and the not youthful look that has been achieved it just looks unnatural rather than fresh to me I think she would benefit from some lower eyelid mid face lifting, some less Botox rather than more. Overall, she looks good for her age, but she doesn't look like Meg Ryan. And I don't think this is a good plastic surgery result. What we aim to do in plastic surgery is almost reconstructive. We're trying to put you back where you were, reconstruct the face that you've lost, not create some caricature or pastiche of the face that you used to have. Overall, on the plastic surgery realistic scale, this is a five out of 10, a relatively youthful look, but not in any way natural. Of interest, side by side, I found a photo of her and David Duchovny on the internet. I think it's very clear and obvious which has had plastic surgery and if the other has had plastic surgery, then it's been very much beneficial and natural. He looks age appropriate. This isn't to say that he hasn't had any intervention, but the intervention has been subtle and it looks a much better, more natural, more movie style look than what Meg Ryan is exhibiting. The last celebrity I want to discuss is Megan Fox, probably one of the most beautiful women in the world, has her photo taken many times in public. I have highlighted her partly because she is so good looking, but also I think she has signs of plastic surgery, but they're very well disguised. They're very congruent. 
they fit in with her look and I think she's an excellent example of what can be achieved and what we all are aiming for when it comes to cosmetic surgery outcomes. To start with she's definitely had some Botox but in her because she has such porcelain smooth skin it looks very natural. Interestingly her eyebrows look a lot thicker in the more recent photos which they could have been grafted but I think that's unlikely. They're probably more likely to be tattooed on or microbladed but it's interesting to note how the fashion for thicker eyebrows has changed her appearance a little. She certainly looks like she's had her upper lid blepharoplasty surgery performed. If you compare the two photos she very clearly has heavier upper eyelids given a fixed brow position in the earlier photos and so again this is an excellent result. Looks very natural but I think this is a procedure she may well have had done. I think she's probably had an open tip rhinoplasty with some onlay grafts to, to strengthen the dorsum of her nose a little. Again, this is a success. It gives her a very strong, well-defined nose, both at the dorsum and at the tip. She may well have had buccal fat resection. It's so common and popular these days that I wouldn't be surprised, but equally she stays so slim and athletic, even despite her advancing years, that it could be just a punishing diet regime. I also think her chin is a little better defined in her later photos. This could be a chin implant, but given the fact that it's a relatively subtle improvement, I think she's more likely to have had some chin tip filler. She may have had fat transfer, but given how slim she is, I think it's unlikely there would have been much fat to harvest. So I'm gonna put my money on chin tip filler as her treatment of choice. It looks like she's had some surgery to the anti-helical fold of one of her ears. She maybe had lots of piercings as a child and she had problems with these, but there is a very clear scar on the anterior aspect of the skin, which we don't normally see. And I wonder if this is a result of some kind of surgical treatment she had, possibly even reconstructive when she was younger. Interestingly, she doesn't have any pictures of her with her hair up since 2021. I wonder if there may be some signs of a facelift, which she doesn't want to show to the public. Uh, as I couldn't find any. Overall, this is a nine out of 10 for me. This is as good as cosmetic surgery gets, but she is a very young, beautiful woman. But I'm sure there is some intervention going on here, but it's very much in the background, not clear, not obvious. And this is truly outstanding cosmetic surgery. So there you have it. Five celebrities, cosmetic surgery journeys, in my opinion. I have no evidence that these patients have undergone any of these treatments. This is just based on my experience over the years. I hope you found that interesting, both as an example of how good cosmetic surgery can be, but also how much it can stand out in a crowd if not done judiciously. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. If you have any comments that you'd like to send, then we'd be very happy to receive them. We try and read every single one and reply to every single one. Even if you have some cosmetic surgery questions, then please send those along. Otherwise, please catch my website at www.adamgoodwinsurgery.com if you have any questions about cosmetic surgery and are in the UK and would like to seek some advice about what's possible. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next video.